20 years ago, I met an Irishman who was charming, clever, and extremely successful. A little over one year ago, that Irishman passed away. My family let my grandfather go with a sadness that went unmatched, but we look back with gratitude at the lessons he taught us and with pride at the legend he had made. On February 3, 1951, my grandparents, Tom and Barbara, were married. The couple had barely finished with their honeymoon when Barbara found out that she was expecting. By the end of the year, they had moved into a new home in Connecticut and had their first son, Thomas Hill III. A year later, Barbara Hill was born. And then, like clockwork, the kids kept coming. Following Barbara was Tim, then Chris, Pat, Terry, and finally Kathy. Amidst all the kids, Tom began his career in the auto industry. His boys followed suit as they grew up, and the first family business, Executive Auto Sales, opened in 1972. In 1989, they opened up Litchfield Ford. Meanwhile, the Hill kids were having kids. By the time that Litchfield Ford had opened its doors, there were already five grandchildren. Samantha was born in 2004, completing the large family. The growth of the Hills was documented every year. Under Tom's instruction, the entire family came together for a picture that was always sent out as the Christmas card. Everyone had to wear bright colors and everyone had to be there. This wasn't easy as the family grew, but it was one of the greatest pleasures that Tom and Barbara had to be able to show off the family they created to the friends they had made over the years. And of course our Christmas pictures are famous to so many people. Mm -hmm, they definitely. did them for 57 years. and. If, if somebody doesn't get that picture, boy, and you see them in a few months, they say, I didn't get your Christmas picture. Yeah, How come? Like me anymore? <laughs> or they'll say, well, I like your theme this year. Mm -hmm. And then one, one year, maybe uh, a few years ago, Grandpa decided, remember we put it in the newspaper? Oh, yeah. And everybody thought he was crazy. It was a big, probably like a 12 by 16 picture in the Waterbury paper. He was so proud that we put that in there. Yeah, it must have been probably 16. And it was, it was expensive, but he didn't care. He just mm -hmm. wanted that picture in the paper, mm -hmm. and everybody would just, you know, come up to him, and they were so excited because if they weren't on the list, at least they still got to see the yeah. picture. And they, everybody knew him. Oh, definitely. He's he uh, had quite a following around mm -hmm. around town just from selling cars. Tom retired from cars, but never from business. He was an active and successful investor in the stock market, and took weekly trips to Litchfield to oversee the work being done. Age never took a toll on his mind, even in his later years. He was a frequent patient at the hospital, but when he wasn't in surgery or with visitors, he was sitting in a chair, using the bed as a makeshift desk, going over papers and instructing us on business and politics. And he just loved to, you know, talk to everybody about business and the stock market. And mm. he was so, so proud of how he did in the stock market. And mm -hmm. I don't remember how he got started in it. I think somebody... <laughs> recommended that he you know start investing a little bit and and he mm. did it when he really didn't have much to invest no and he just studied it and he just he, he was i don't know he just understood it he always loved to take my grandma out dancing they did after all meet at that barn dance and he was always happy to step in and share a song with his daughters besides dancing he loved to sing i grew up listening to him sing along to bing crosby and judy garland and he taught my cousins and I about melodies with simple plastic kazoos. Every year at Christmas, my family played a game where we had to answer a question or stand up and do something, and we were rewarded with $2 bills. Sometimes we had to sing a holiday song, and if we were too shy, Grandpa was always happy to lead us in. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas just like the ones I used to know, where the treetops glisten and children listen to hear sleigh bells in the snow. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas with every Christmas card I write. May your days be merry and bright, and may all your Christmas be white. 
how they loved music, though. Mm. And he was a great singer. Yeah. He would sing in, in the backyard at, at uh, parties, and they loved to dance, the two of them. Whenever they went to a wedding or something, they just couldn't wait to be able to dance. The cheek to cheek, it was so <laughs> cute. Still, my grandpa's love of business and music never surpassed his family. He may have been tough with his opinions, but it was only because he wanted the best for us. Above all, he cherished my grandma. They lived a full life together and enjoyed a happy retirement. I admire their relationship more than any other I've ever seen. Every night, like say he got home at like 5.30 or 6 o'clock, grandma always waited at the door for him. It wasn't like now where you have cell phones and you'd be like, I'm on my way. Yeah. But she or just knew <laughs> yeah, when he was coming. And she'd stand at the door and he'd walk up the walk. And it was just so cute, you know, that they always did that. My grandpa passed away on April 24th, 2008, just five days before his 84th birthday. I wish I had gotten to know him better, but I'm inspired by his ambitions, by his beliefs, and by the great love he had for all of us. We remember him through my grandma's great stories, old videos, and best of all, the 57 family pictures that we are so glad that he wanted. <laughs>